Hi, hello everyone. I hope you have a great time on this observability day. Uh, it's grown a lot since we started it, uh, I think first one in 2022 in Detroit, I believe. Uh, it's super amazing to see uh, it's growing bigger and bigger. In this talk, we are really excited to introduce you to the topic of Prometheus Kubernetes operators. But you won't be a standard Prometheus operator talk, by the way, because of two reasons. First, we actually introduce you to two operators. You know, one is the official Prometheus operator we all love uh, to use and, and have fun with it. And we also introduce you to a bit newer Google uh, managed Prometheus operator, uh, in short GMP, uh, which has some pros and cons. The second reason why it's a bit unique talk is that we will actually focus on metric collection use case on Kubernetes clusters, right? So only scraping, you know, maybe aggregating and sending this data straight to remote endpoint being another Prometheus, Thanos, Cortex, or just vendor, right? So a little bit simplified concept, but still not easy to grasp. So in the next 20 minutes, I really hope you to learn first why operators are really useful in this case, in this collection use case, how to configure and use both Prometheus operator and GMP operator, and uh, when to use which. And finally, you'll see hopefully a working live demo um, of both running on a cluster. So before, but before, short introduction. I'm, uh, I have Max with me. Hello, guys. My name is uh, Mahmoud Amin. I also go by Max. I am a uh, software engineer at Google. And I, uh, I'm a GMP operator maintainer. And I was a uh, open source mentor for on a few projects like GSOC. Uh, fun fact about me is uh, I have 10 patents. Um, I used to be a closed self developer. But uh, it's more fun to develop in the open. Nice. Thank you. I don't have any patents. Um, but um, I'm working also with Max. I'm actually leading the Google, Manage, Google Cloud Managed Service for Prometheus team. Um, I maintain Prometheus. I co-started Thanos project. And generally, I, I love working in open source. I maintain various libraries as well. I'm also active in the CNCF TAC observability. Join us if you're interested in observability. And finally, I also wrote a book called Efficient Go. It's about Golang programming and optimizations. And actually, tomorrow, I'll be giving away and signing those couple of dozens of copies for anybody that will come first. So save this date if you want to back, if you want to have a book and uh, how to optimize your software, you're welcome. But let's focus on today's discussion. In our experience, you know, this, uh, the most pragmatic way, pragmatic way of designing your Prometheus collection pipeline or metric experience at general um, is what we call this collection use case or agent mode sometimes. As you might know, Prometheus is a very powerful project. It's a binary, actually, that has multiple metric functionalities into one binary or into one process. It scrapes, it, it, it compacts, it, uh, it stores, it, there is, it gives you alerting, it gives you querying. There's so much stuff that you can put in this binary, it's simple and, and convenient. Um, however, while this is useful for more dynamic uh, environments like Kubernetes, uh, especially when hybrid stories into place where you have multiple Kubernetes clusters, but also other environments, maybe other cloud providers, um, maybe you know, it's quite beneficial to partition the collection logic and, and, and the other part, right? And the best part of the design um, of, of just scoping to the collection pattern um, is that tons of complexity is moving somewhere else, maybe to some other team, maybe to a vendor that you can pay temporarily or do it on your own. And on Kubernetes, what you are left with is really stateless processes, be it Prometheus, um, which only you know, scrape your applications, for, scrape metrics from your applications, group those metrics, you know, possibly add some metadata, uh, group them up, filter, and then stream those metrics to remote backend of your choice. And in CNCF, we have lots of options for that. We have uh, Prometheus actually can be uh, your remote backend. You can, and you will see that on the live demo. Uh, the, but there's also you know, Cortex, Thanos project, but there are many, many other vendors um, and, and other projects as well. So do we need to have operator in this case, right? Because we simplify stuff. So before I answer this question, I, let's, let's have a small disclaimer. I'm generally not a greatest fan of operators, Kubernetes operators generally, right? I think we build too many operators for too simple operations. Um, uh, we did like yeah, a bit interesting stuff around uh, operator actually 
playing and, 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 and uh, scheduling uh, CRDs, uh, resources of other operators, and this other operator also schedules some CRDs of other operators, nested operators. It's kind of getting out of control a little bit. Like there are certain things you can do in your application instead of actually writing an operator, um, especially if it's stateless software. So we kind of went overboard. Um, and each operator in your cluster is additional problem. Like it introduces overhead with resources, additional resource use, um, another point of failure, another lag, and kind of delay in whatever operation this you are doing. So there is already additional complexity to already difficult system systems we run. Despite all of that, I think the answer here is yes. I think um, a Kubernetes operator for collecting Prometheus metrics makes sense, and I will tell you why. So first of all, first reason why, in, why, uh, why operator is useful is scrape configuration. As you might know, Prometheus um, requires scrape to be configured uh, in a one big YAML, right? So each application can be encoded as individual jobs maybe. You filter on and reach this uh, with relabeling, which is super powerful. And once you apply this configuration, maybe mount a config map or something, your Prometheus, we know what to scrape, done. The three problems with that is that first, you have to understand relabeling and really understand this YAML configuration. And you know, maybe it's, it's, it's kind of complex for you to use. You have other systems to learn as well. Second, if there are uh, different teams, multiple teams uh, on the single cluster, which we already, I mean, we have that a lot because Kubernetes comes with multi-tenancy uh, semantics like namespaces, for example, you, you, have a pro you have a problem because suddenly multiple teams, multiple people responsible for different ap applications, they come in and, and change one single file. So there will be conflicts, there will be um, one team uh, breaking uh, monitoring for another team, so this can be, can be problematic. Final problem is that to debug any problems with this, you have to really understand Prometheus UI and what is happening. Um, maybe you go to Prometheus UI, you have to kind of like have a read access to this very critical process that collects your metrics, which is you know, kind of like uh, sensitive. Then also, you know, you break multi-tenancy because you suddenly see all the pods running everywhere um, on this page. So there are lots of considerations um, for this to not work well. How operators can help here? Well, there is like this common pattern where operator um, can expose a custom uh, resource, custom resource definition that allows to scrape configuration in fine-grained way, for example, per application, per team, per pod. And, um, and this is super useful because then you can have a separate file per team that literally specifies per application where the application metric endpoint is, how to select that application, uh, how to filter those metrics, how to remove add those metrics, and maybe how to authorize um, you know, Prometheus to, uh, to scrape those metrics uh, under secure environments. So, so generally, that's useful. On top of that, there is possibility to kind of like maybe propagate some status of this, you know, of this scrape. Like, would, was this successful? How many targets you actually discovered? And you can propagate those information back to, back to um, this custom resource. So, for example, in the in the image, you see the status field, and and you can immediately debug things without going to UI, exposing maybe sensitive information and so on. So generally, it's beautiful because it's way easier, much easier to, sh uh, to use um, Prometheus and, and make Prometheus collection in a shared environment. And finally, especially on Kubernetes, you know, collection ideally scales, right? It scales, scales by the amount of metrics you have, by the amount of applications you have. The beautiful part about using Prometheus for collection is that it's suddenly stateless. So you can totally like create another Prometheus and tear down dynamically, as long as there is like a graceful period for uh, remaining samples to be sent. Um, but that's solved by you in Prometheus project. So generally, you can scale out and back very dynamically um, to save costs and for reliability. While operators are not strictly required for this, um, they help, right? They, they can serve as, as a controller for, for this auto-scaling and at least simplify configuration for kind of complex, maybe hash mode configuration that we have in Prometheus, you literally hide that by, I don't know, specifying number or number of shards you have. And you don't need to think how to really configure the complex labeling for hash mode. Uh, so consistent, consistent hashing um, kind of, uh, of load balancing the scrape targets, right? So to sum up, 
We should look on either Prometheus operator or GMP operator if you want to simplify your collection configuration, especially if you have multiple teams, multiple tenants, and when you are kind of new or you want to have a very as easy as possible scaling capabilities of Prometheus collection, right? Now let's quickly walk over those two operators. Let's start with Prometheus operator, and I, I'm, I'm kind of grateful to, to have privilege to work with the team in Red Hat who created uh, Prometheus operator from the start. It was actually one of the first operators, Kubernetes operators, if not the first one. Um, so, so it was a beautiful journey. I learned a lot from it. Um, so let's walk, uh, walk, walk through it. So kind of for the collection purposes, we, we can look only on two things. Um, first of all, we can look on the Prometheus custom resource or Prometheus agent custom resource. Both can kind of allow you to specify your Prometheus deployment. And we can kind of specify that for collection. For example, we can specify, you know, its name and how many shards you have. Um, Arthur and Nicholas today had a talk about how to make this auto-scalable, auto so, so that's also an option and it's incoming or already possible in experimental, as an experimental feature in Prometheus Operator. And you specify remote write URL, and that's really it. Um, make sure to put this pod, name, pod, na pod monitor namespace selectors, even if they're empty, because otherwise they will uh, not select any custom resources for scraping. So once that's done, once you apply it, you know, you have free Prometheus is running in with hash mode and sending data to remote backend. Now for target scrape uh, configuration, you again have pod monitors, for example. There are also service monitors, but I will focus on pod monitor here. Um, and literally you specify what pods uh, they select and what uh, monitoring properties they have. So essentially where their metric endpoint is, what interval do you want from um, those metrics, and maybe what kind of like additional metadata or labels you want to add or remove. Um, so that's, that's all possible. Now let's talk about GMP operator. All right, let's talk about the GMP operator. So uh, what is GMP? It's it stands for Google Cloud Managed Service for Prometheus. We call it GMP for short. It's uh, similar to the Prometheus operator where it offers a managed Prometheus experience. It allows you to manage your Prometheus instances. It also allows you to deploy like managed rule evaluators and alert manager. Uh, it was developed by Google. And uh, GMP operator has a different set of CRDs from the Prometheus operator. I'll show that to you guys now. And uh, it's fully open source and it's available on GitHub. So. GMP is different. It's different than the Prometheus operator because um, unlike the Prometheus op operator that deploys Prometheus instances as a deployment, the GMP operator deploys it as a daemon set, which means for every node you have, you run a copy of Prometheus. And whenever a new node is added, a new Prometheus instance is added. Whenever you remove a node, a Prometheus instance is removed. And each node has like a dedicated Prometheus for that, uh, for scraping metrics in that uh, node. And um, it, Prometheus uses filter targets to ensure that only targets in that node are scraped. And uh, because, of, because it's only um, limited to a single node, that means the number of metrics are naturally constrained to the node, the capacity of the node. So let's talk about our first CR. That's, um, it's called operator config. It's very similar to the Prometheus uh, and slash Prometheus agent CRD that Bartek just talked about. And uh, it's a singleton that runs on your cluster, and it's, it's like a top-level view where you can configure special uh, configurations for your, all your Prometheus instances. Some of that is um, like remote write, like you can see here, or collection, what kind of compression you want for your metrics, what kind of filters you want to use, et cetera. Um, so our main uh, CR, which is similar to, to pod monitor, that Bartek talked about, it's called pod monitoring. And uh, pod monitoring has a strict namespace tenancy. That means it can only scrape uh, workloads that exist in a certain namespace, and you can't scrape uh, targets in other namespaces. As you can see in this example, um, you can see in the bold namespace one is highlighted, and we're scraping app A. So app A and nodes one and two are getting scraped, but node three, app A, is in a different namespace, so it's not getting scraped. So the next one is called cluster pod monitoring. It's the same thing as pod monitoring, except it's cluster scoped. And this allows you to scrape um, from apps all over your clusters without namespace. Um, 
this is an improvement on pod monitoring because if you have like many similar apps that exist in different namespaces, you don't need to create a pod monitoring for each of these. Also, if you're an admin, this is a very powerful tool if you want to query across namespaces and look at what your apps are doing. All right, let's talk about um, optimizing GMP operator as a for daemon set deployment. So um, all the GMP CRDs are tailor set for a uh, daemon set. It also optimizes uh, Prometheus configurations for daemon sets. And uh, this is the complex engineering that we're hiding from the user. And uh, some of these technical challenges were um, utilizing the Kubernetes API watch cache, which keeps an index of all the pods that exist in every node name. And this is a cheap way for Prometheus to know what pods exist on the node that it currently resides in. And this all happens without impacting Kubernetes performance. Um, for the same reason, we don't need service monitor abstractions like Prometheus Operator. Uh, if you're interested in more details, you can watch this talk by Danny Clark called uh, state, uh, stateless, stateless Collection for Stateful Data Collection, and uh, from KubeCon 22. Um, so an upcoming feature we have is called Secrets Management. This feature allows the GMP operator to handle your secrets without exposing a Prometheus that doesn't need access to that secret. And this is a really challenging engineering problem, and it's, it's very hard to implement in a secure and efficient way. But we have some ideas on how to implement it, so stay tuned. All right, demo time. Um, so for this demo, we're gonna show you how easy it is to deploy GMP operator and Prometheus operator, and we're gonna have a sample app that we're gonna scrape metrics from, and uh, we're gonna do all that at the same time. Pretty ambitious. All right, let me mirror my screen. All right, so I have a clean cluster running right now, and it has three nodes. So um, for the GMP operator, it's gonna deploy three collections, three uh, Prometheus instances, and for the Prometheus operator, we can configure that. So all right, let's configure a metric source. So we're gonna configure this app called Avalanche. Avalanche is basically an app that emits uh, metrics and it scales over time. And let's configure a Prometheus remote write that you can write metrics to. All right, so this is how you install a Prometheus operator. This is provided to you, bundle.yaml, it's on their GitHub. You could just use it and you just apply it right away. And then the next step, is you configure the Prometheus CRD that Bartok was telling you about. So as you can see here, we're gonna have two shards, we're gonna have a remote write, and uh, we're also gonna add an external label called operator, Prometheus operators, to mark that this came from Prometheus operator, uh, that was Prometheus operator created Prometheus instance. All right, so we're gonna apply that. And yeah, here we go. We see the operator came up and the two shards of Prometheus are coming up as we speak. All right, let's also install GMP operator as well. So this is how we set up the CRDs for the Prometheus operator. This is all provided to you on the GitHub. It's the first thing you run. And then the second thing is you just install the operator also provided to you on the GitHub. All right. so. Also, similar to what we just did for the Prometheus operator, where we configured the Prometheus agent CRD, let's configure the operator config, which is its equivalent for GMP. So we also have um, the same thing, remote write, same endpoint, and we add um, an external label operator GMP so we can know that this came from a Prometheus created by GMP. Um, you don't need charting. We don't have that because we exist in every node. All right, let's apply it. All right, so as you can see, like remember we had three nodes, so three collectors are automatically co uh, created and you have the operator. So yeah, that's how easy it is to start uh, Prometheus operator and GMP. All right, let's do some interesting stuff. Let's start scraping. All right, so this is a pod monitor. Bartok introduced us to it and we're just scraping this endpoint metrics every 15 seconds. And our app is called metric source. So let's apply that. 
And let's do the same thing for the GMP operator. So we have a pod monitoring for GMP, same endpoint metrics every 15 seconds. And pod monitoring is our namespace scoped, but since there's no namespace here, it, it's going to use default. All right, let's apply that as well. And let's see, all our apps are running. All right, let's try to see in Prometheus if I can find it. Ah, here we go. All right, so click to execute. You can see um, Prometheus operator come up. There's two avalanches that we're using, and GMP operator is starting up also. Uh, the Prometheus operator we started up first. So the, as we query, the GMP operator should start up. And uh, you can see that um, I'm like aggregating by operator. So Prometheus operator has that external label, and GMP operator has that, also has that external label. Can explain what this backend is. The Let's remote. explain what the backend is, like receiver, Prometheus receiver. Essentially. Yeah. So our backend is essentially a Prometheus receiver, and we are sending these uh, write requests via remote write. And so it's going to come up slowly over the next couple of minutes. Yeah. But yeah. To pros and cons. All right. Let's. Yeah. Bartok will give us the TLDR. Amazing. Thanks for the demo. Uh, went almost smoothly. Um, so we have two choices. And probably you're asking, OK, which one you should choose? It's not like one is better than another. Um, there are essentially pros and cons. So let's go walk through them very quickly. So generally, Prometheus operator really focuses on HashMod deployment. Like that was the first deployment model um, Prometheus operator offers. And it's very good at this. And it has, again, like benefits. One benefit of HashMod is, for example, when the n n Prometheus running on the node, you know, you, you have Prometheus per node as a daemon set. If, uh, if the target is too big on one node, you might have a problem. You have to kind of vertically scale that. But in practice, you know, we found that's, that's a good trade-off to have. Um, it's also worth mentioning that Prometheus operator is working on more deployment models. In fact, it's incoming the daemon set-based deployment model, and we are kind of helping contributing this to, to Prometheus Operator will come eventually, right? However, the, um, the, TL, the, the CRDs will be still kind of like tailored for everything else. It's not going to be like fully tailored for demon sets, which comes where this is where another point comes, right? So Prometheus Operator is really good at uh, running Prometheus. It's not only for collection, but also for all the other stuff, like literally a, as a full metric backend, right? So you can scale on Kubernetes Prometheus for high availability. You can have queries, storages, alerting, all of this. Um, it's combined with Thanos, uh, Thanos processes and so on. So it's kind of smooth on that flow, on that, uh, on that stage. Uh, for our GMP operator, it's a, little bit, uh, a bit different because he, we only support a uh, demon set intentionally, right? So we can have simpler CRDs, simpler pod monitoring and so on. So you kind of like, yeah, you, you don't have a lot of choices. You just, you know what you're doing and it's optimized for that model. Um, finally, Prometheus operator has just all the knobs that you might need from Prometheus, like literally what Prometheus offers as a flags, you know, Prometheus operator has as well. For GMP operator, we don't show all the options. We have opinionated, Google opinionated version of your configuration, which you, in our opinion, you should kind of like know about. Um, so it's much simpler. But then if you are more advanced users of Prometheus, then maybe uh, you'll be missing some option. And still it's open source, so let us know. Maybe there is some important option to have, but we keep it limited so it's easier for users, but it has some trade-offs again. Um, Prometheus Operator has service monitors, right? It's not easily possible to have service monitor in a pod monitor, it, in daemon set deployment, although we can kind of like try to hack it through. Um, so yeah, you have, we, 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 we drop it. And, and to be honest, to be fair, like it's, it's really not that big change. You just switch to selecting pods instead of selecting your services. So it's not that a big deal. Um, and GMP operator, for example, has target status propagation. So it kind of tells the YAML back, essentially tells the CRD pod monitoring what actually is scraped, what targets they discovered, and so on. You have to enable this feature um, manually in operator, operator config, but it's worth a while. So generally, TLDR, 
Prometheus operator, more options, more useful if you want uh, local querying um, capabilities. Um, and GMP operator, perhaps simpler stack, and also it is enabled by default in GKE. What I mean is that when you create a new cluster, GKE cluster in Google Cloud, you have this installed, and literally you can start using pod monitors, and you know you will see your metric in Google Cloud monitoring, or you can configure a custom remote write endpoint to send it to your whatever else cloud or Thanos Cortex and so on. With that, that's all what we wanted to cover. Thank you so much, and yeah, we're open for questions. Yeah, I think there is a mic somewhere for questions, and... Hmm? Uh, first of all, thanks for the presentation, awesome. Uh, my first question would be about the pod monitor. Uh, in the operator of Prometheus, you can do relabeling and metric relabeling as well. Is, are you able to support uh, the, the relabeling config on the pod monitor uh, provided by the operator? Yeah, so you have uh, metric relabeling, right? So you can do whatever you want with after the metric is scraped. Yeah. But for uh, relabeling uh, that is before metric is scraped, so this relabeling is used for service discovery, we lock that in and we offered a simplified opinionated filtering. And, and a way of adding labels and removing labels, right? So literally you have like add label and remove label. And, um, and just simplify the logic, but of course you cannot do all the magic that you can do with labeling, right? And then I have a, I don't know how to name that type of question, but uh, the, the open temperature operator, uh, we discussed about it, so if you, it has a target allocator that discover the Prometheus CR by default. So if you have any pod monitor, it will scrap it automatically. Are you planning to release uh, like a Google Open Temperature Operator supporting those CRDs instead of the tra traditional uh, Prometheus versions? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what I want, what I, what I can share, but we are definitely working on some Open Telemetry, you know, like manage experience in some opinionated way. But you, yeah, stay tuned. There will be something. And, and last question is: uh, the Prometheus Operator provides uh, Grafana. Yeah. And there's an option to say uh, to deploy config maps with your uh, actual JSON file of your dashboard. Uh, do you support this, or are you planning to support this? No. Again, we are only collection focused, which makes us which makes this operator much simpler and easier to maintain and for everyone. So no, it's only collection. Yeah. All right. Tim. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I think we have to finish, but one thing, we have a contrib fest, which is essentially a workshop on Friday, uh, where we will be literally with you on your laptop, we'll just deploy Prometheus operator or GMP operator if you want, and we'll try to stress it. So come, and we'll help you to run it on your own laptop. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>